The Alawai Watershed Project was started back in 2010 by Papa Jack, who really wanted to get kids out into you know, Hawaii's environment and nature so that they could learn to care about it. And so he took them out to tidal marshes and out on the ocean, but then also he felt it was really important to understand our own backyard and where Iolani is. I wanted to take Wet Lab Bay because I thought it would be a really interesting class. And also I wanted to prove to myself that I could do something meaningful before I like leave Iolani. There's a shrimp, you see that? See what's underneath? Does that look like a snail in there? We're really fortunate to have Corey Yap, who's a stream biologist, and he's helping support our citizen science program. 2010 is when I started in the summer with that Jack K Fellowship and the two students that were awarded with the fellowship. And yeah, we started monitoring climate and water quality, and when Jack retired, the school still felt it was important to keep this, this momentum going and keep our community involved into doing citizen science. Hi. This one has a, like a suction cup for its fin, oh. instead of two fins, right? So I can climb. Remember the opu climbing in the video in class? Citizen science is where normal people, teachers, students, parents, go out and then they collect scientific data that researchers can use. What we've been trying to do here in Hawaii is do something similar, which is mobilize our community to help collect data that couldn't be collected otherwise. So what we're trying to do is, is put together a community of schools that are all on the watershed and all understand it. So we can take a look and say, oh, what was the water quality down in the Alawai compared to further upstream, you know, near Manoa Elementary. And putting it all together really shows how we are all interconnected in this watershed. And what we do upstream has an influence on what's done downstream. We use a remote vehicle actually developed here to go out and it pulls a water quality sensor and a plankton net. And then we also look at pollutants like nitrate, nitrite, phosphorus, and ammonia. We'll look at bacteria levels like E. coli and fecal coliform. With the Alawai cat, you can have numerous types of sensors and have students drive in and collect data. And whether they need to get to a remote area that's on the other side of the Alawai that we can't walk to, we can drive it there. You know, we can tell using sensors and probes, but the ultimate sentinel of water quality is, are the species where they're supposed to be. And if they're not, why aren't they there? We start looking for our native species. It kind of tells us a little bit about our habitat quality and ultimately water quality in general. It is especially important for our native fish to have those connections. Even if the habitat quality looks great, you know, it's nice, cold, oxygen-rich water without any pollutants, there aren't any native species upstream. And the reason why is because they have to make it through this gauntlet of pollution and invasive species to get there. So recently, fifth graders and the upper school students had the opportunity to see this in the field firsthand. In our study sites that we tend to monitor, we tend to see majority of invasive species. We block off certain sections of the stream with large nets. In between there, we're hoping to collect all those fish by chasing them downstream. Sometimes those nets can be full, almost so full that we can't pick up the nets when we try to lift them out of the water. And you know, sometimes there's not so much fish. It just depends what sites we're at, you know, and what time of day maybe we are. And afterwards, what are we seeing? Are we seeing a lot of invasive species? Are we seeing a lot of native species? Well, what are we going to do with those invasive species? Are we going to put them back in a stream? Or is it better to take them out? And if we take them out, what does that mean? Does that mean less competition for the natives? Does that mean the habitat quality is going to improve? 
uh, it's supposed to, but we'll see over time. If we keep doing this with Iolani School, as well as other schools in other areas, are we going to see an improvement in habitat over time? And are we going to see more native species come back? When we went to the stream with the little kids, that was a great experience because when I was that age, I don't think I've done something like that. So for them to learn and be able to understand what's happening in the streams and how we affect it and how they can make a difference is really important. What's really neat about Wet Lab is that they all wanted to do, do something positive, right? To have an impact. We have them for 13 years, so once they care about this place and are excited, and then they can look up to like, yeah, one day I'll be in the research lab or I'll be removing invasive species from the alawai. It's not an easy process, but you know, we're gonna start at the beginning and right now, we're getting as much data as we can, getting more grade levels involved, getting them educated about what's going on around here, and then ultimately improve in the future.